Hey guys, what's up? My name is Chana Sora, and today we're doing a top 5 list of my favorite games from 2016. My top 5 list may vary from yours, so please keep that in mind during my review and don't go too crazy in the comments. 2016 had a huge selection of amazing games for gamers to play this year, and also had a few trashy games too, but that's a debate for another time. Everyone's here today to appreciate their favorite game, so please sit back and enjoy the video. Before we start, I just want to take a few minutes to discuss my runner-ups from 2016. First up on the list is Pokemon Go. Now, I know most of you are shaking your head at me right now, but I really enjoyed playing Pokemon Go during this summer with all my friends. The app really blew up in July when it released and it had over 40 million players. But as the year went on, the player base dropped significantly. Only the true fans stayed and I still play the game daily even though everyone else stopped playing months ago. Niantic still updates the game which is nice and I'll probably continue playing Pokemon Go into 2017. Go Team Mystic! The next runner up on the list is Skyliners Imaginators. Greetings Portal Master. Welcome to Skylines. Long ago, the ancients used mind magic to create everything in our world. And somehow, this power has been reawakened. But now, someone is using it to create monsters, the likes of which have never been seen. As a portal monster, you must now use mind magic to create heroes of your own to combat these unstoppable foes. And to help train them, I am sending you the greatest Skylander senseis of all time! A great adventure awaits you, Portal Master! This game is the main reason why I actually bought a PS4 during the summer. When Activision announced at E3 earlier this year that Crash Bandicoot was coming to Skylanders, I literally jumped out of my seat and screamed. Crash Bandicoot was my childhood hero, and I loved playing all original Crash Bandicoot games on the PS1 back in the late 90s. The fact that Activision finally brought Crash Bandicoot back to life was a huge selling point for me and a lot of other gamers too. After I completed Thumpa Wumpa Islands on the channel, uh, I actually went through the, most of the Skylanders campaign off camera and had a great time. The only negative thing I can say about, about the game, I just wish Activision wouldn't charge so freaking much for their figures. The Skyliners figures do cost a lot and uh, I do love the game to be honest. I really really do love the game but you have to spend a lot of money to collect all the figures. The last game on the runner-ups list is Planet vs Zombies Heroes. As many of you know by now I'm a huge PBZ fanboy and I spent countless amounts of hours playing PBZ Heroes on my phone. This game is so addictive and fun. If you're already familiar with card games I think you'll love this app once you give it a try. PBC Heroes has a lot to offer, but the biggest feature in this game is online multiplayer. You can battle against your friends or random players in a casual or ranked matches. The game has 20 heroes, over 500 cards and more to collect, and also a single player campaign too. I can probably go on forever about this game, but I won't because we're on a time schedule here. If you haven't downloaded PBC Heroes yet, it's free on iOS and Android, so give it a try. Now that we've discussed all my runner-ups, it's finally time to announce my top 5 list of 2016. Starting at number 5 is Overwatch. I know for many of you, Overwatch is your number 1 game of the year, but for me, I just didn't put enough hours into the game to really fall in love with it. I bought Overwatch on PC on day one back in May, only put 13 plus hours in the game and kind of dropped off after a month. I stopped playing it because I hardly had any friends to play with on PC, but as time went on, the game grew really popular and now Overwatch has over 20 million players. I actually bought the game twice, now I'm starting to really enjoy it again and it's nice to play with all my friends on Xbox One. I'm not a pro gamer at all in Overwatch. I just love spending time with my friends and trying to see who can earn play of the game. The heroes I main is McCree, Roadhog, Konzo, and Widowmaker. Who's your favorite hero? Let me know in the comments down below. Coming up at number 4 is Battlefield 1.
When this game released back in October, I didn't have high expectations for it, but I was completely blown away by the amount of detail and the massive World War 1 environments that DICE has recreated. This game has a very solid single player campaign called War Stories, and it really shows you what World War 1 felt like back in the early 90s. This was a massive war and it lasted over four years long. There were so many countries involved. DICE has done an excellent job telling six amazing war stories in the campaign and it's worth visiting if you have free time to play it. They push, we push. Every once in a while, we push hard enough that the light breaks through the cloud. It's in a world beyond the war glimmers, just out of reach. The war is the world, and the world is the war. But behind every gun sight is a human being. We are those people. We are the jaded. We are the naive. We are the honorable and the criminal. We are the bound for legend and the lost to history. We are the knights of the sky, the ghosts in the desert, and the rats in the mud. These are our stories. Moving on to the multiplayer, I cannot get enough of this game. I have spent so many hours just playing online, every match feels unique and more challenging than the last. My favorite class to play is the Scout. The Scout uses a very powerful mid to long range rifle to pick off his enemies from a distance. And he also uses a ton of gadgets to provide reconnaissance for your teammates. The Scout is super helpful to spot enemies and pinpoint their positions to assist your team and achieve an easy victory. My favorite game modes in Battlefield 1 is Domination, Operations, and Team Deathmatch. The game has so much more to offer, so I highly recommend recommend you picking a Battlefield 1 soon whenever it goes on sale. The next game on the list is Stardew Valley. This game released in February, it was available on PC, but now you can get it on Xbox or PS4. If you never played Stardew Valley before, let me fill you in. I bought the game during a Steam sale back in late May and spent almost 100 hours playing it non-stop. The backstory is your dying grandfather leaves you the deed to a small farm and it's up to you to bring the farm back to life and make it profitable again. Stardew Valley has 30 unique characters that populate the village. You can make new friends, get into relationships, and you can also get married too if you meet that special someone. There's actually a lot you can do in the game. You can go fishing, cut down trees, craft your items, you can go mining, build up your farm, and so, so much more. I literally found myself losing track of time while I was playing Stardew Valley, and it's very easy to do. This game deserves so much credit and will always have a special place in my heart. Best indie game I played all year, and I'm not afraid to admit it. At number two is The Starter 2. Why do we celebrate the anniversary of an assassination? Fifteen years ago, in the middle of a plague that nearly destroyed Dunwall. A paid killer assaulted the palace where I was born and stabbed my mother in the heart. In the aftermath, the men who sent the assassin tried to use me as a pawn in a game of power. They would have succeeded, but my father, Corvo Atano, hunted them down and cut their conspiracy to pieces. All these years later, am I the ruler my mother wanted me to be? Now? We face a new crisis. A monster the papers are calling the Crown Killer has been picking off my enemies and dressing it up like my father and I are responsible. I don't know whether to get on a ship and sail to the opposite side of the world, or to have everyone around me executed.
Dishonored 2 is an extremely well-made first-person selfie single-player on consoles. Dishonored 2 is an excellent sequel to the original Dishonored game that released in late 2012. It picks up where the last game left off. I won't spoil the story mode for you, I'm only going to cover the basics. You have the choice to play as the Empress Emily or the Royal Protector Corvo, and it's up to you to retake the throne from Delilah and figure out the conspiracy. Depending on who you picked, Emily and Corvo have their own set of special abilities and weapons at their disposal. You're also given the option to receive supernatural powers from the outsider. Empress Emily Caldwin. I'm a friend of your father's from the bad old days. I never expected us to meet. I watched your mother die at the hands of schemers who wanted your little empire. Then you were rescued by a killer in a strange mask. I thought that was the end of the excitement. But... Delilah and the Duke are flies in the ointment, aren't they? How many of your own subjects are you ready to slaughter? And what are you willing to become? Fifteen years ago, I asked Corvo that last question. This is the moment that changed him. Now it's your turn, Emily. You can either accept this help or deny it, but it's fully up to you. The game has so many choices for you to make. It burns. From the inside, I feel like I'm standing at the edge of something. As the story progresses, you'll want to pay attention to the chaos levels. If you kill too many innocent people, guards, or cause too many distractions, the chaos level will rise. The chaos level will determine how many guards will appear in each area, increase blood flies, and can alter the ending. If you prefer going full stealth mode, try doing a non-lethal playthrough. It's kind of worth doing because you'll earn more achievements and trophies that way. If you're looking for a great stealthy single player game, I highly recommend picking up Dishonored 2. Drum roll, please! And the game of the year goes to Plant vs. Zombies Garden Warfare 2. I know majority of you guys knew I was going to pick this game, but can you really blame me? Come on, can you really blame me? I have spent over 500 hours playing God of War 2 on Xbox One, and I still continue to play this game daily. I just fell in love with it on day one back in February, and haven't stopped playing it since. PopCap has done an outstanding job this year, and I cannot thank them enough for making such a fantastic game. Since launch, PopCap has released five free content updates this year, Graveyard Variety Pack, Trouble in Zombopolis Part 1 and Part 2, Trials and Gnomas, and Frontline Fighters. It's such a nice gift when developers don't charge for DLC and provide everyone the free updates every month or so. Right now, I'm going to cover some of the main features that PVC God of War 2 has to offer. The game has 24 player multiplayer, over 16 maps, solo quests, single player campaign, online and local split screen, over 100 characters, seasonal events, and so 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 much more. I haven't even mentioned half of the stuff that's included in this game. To make things short, PVC God of War 2 will go down the history books as my favorite game of 2016 and it totally deserves a 10 out of 10 score. Well that's it guys, that is my top top five games of 2016 and I really 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 hope you guys enjoyed this video. I also appreciate it if everyone could smash that like button and write down your top five games of 2016 in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching and until next time guys I'll talk to you guys later. Have a wonderful day.